This is Dr. Michael Myers, and I'm course lead faculty for BST 322, Introduction to Biomedical Statistics at National University in San Diego. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use StatCrunch to actually do a linear regression, a scatter plot, and then answer the question, if we have two quantitative variables that are correlated, how do we know that that correlation is significant? And then in terms of regression, if we're given a value of x, can we find a value of y? StatCrunch can do that very easily, so let's start with an example of non-exercise activity. So in this example, what we have is a sample of people, and the question is, does fidgeting keep you slim? Well, what we know is that some people don't gain weight even when they are overfed. And what's interesting is that's usually an occurrence of their non-exercise activity. What we see here in the data is for each level of uh, non-exercise activity range here, this is in calories, we see a level of fat gain that occurs after the people are overfed and they return to a normal diet. So we want to see is there a correlation between the non-exercise activity and how much people uh, gain, f gain weight after coming off of an overfed diet. Well, to do that, we just need to plot these numbers. So basically, we want to know what the correlation coefficient r is. Now, we did this uh, the first week in class, and we did a scatter plot, so we can do those as well. But now we want to also talk about what is this coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination is the r squared value, and it's going to really tell us the percent of variance that's seen in one variable that's explained by the other. And then the last thing we want to ask is, is there a statistically significant correlation between fat gain and non-exercise activity in this case? So to do that, the first thing we want to do is calculate that R value, right? Get that equation of the line, and then we want to do a statistical test with that R value to see if we have a significant relationship or not. So again, we can do that very easily in StatCrunch like we did in the first week of class. And I'm going to go ahead and load that data in for you, even though we can just type it in. But rather than watching me type, I will load that data in from an Excel file that I've created. Okay, so now we have the data loaded in. That was the data we saw in this correlation example. So you can go ahead and type this data in yourself and follow along with us just by pausing the recording and typing the data in. So the first thing we want to do is we can graphically arrange the data. So just like we did the first week, right, we can go up to graphics and we can do a scatter plot very easily in StatCrunch. So we click on scatter plot. And again, our x variable in terms of scatter plot is usually going to be our independent variable. The one we're interested in, the outcome variable, is usually plotted on the y-axis. So that y variable, the outcome variable, or the dependent variable in this case, is going to be the fat gain. That's what we're interested in, right? How much people uh, are going to lose or gain weight based upon their non-exercise activity. That would make the non-exercise activity the x variable. Right? We click Next. And again, for our plot, we can with an assumption that we're going to have a linear association here, we're going to choose a first order reaction. Again, we're not going to click on lines, we're just going to display it in points. We'll make our line size 2, our point size 3. So remember, this is what we did the first week when we can adjust our scatter plot to make the graph look uh, presentable. We'll click Next. Again, we can label the axes, right? So our x-axis is going to be our NEA, our non-exercise activity. We can even put that in with the levels here. So this is NEA change. That's in calories. Our y-axis again is our outcome variable and this time this time it's going to be fat gain. And we can even put that unit in which is going to be kilo, in kilograms. Click next. Oh, we can give it a title. So we can call it um, fidgeting and slimness if we want, assuming that's what we're going to find, or whatever title we want we can put in there, and we click create graph. Okay, so first you see this data, like we did the first week when we did scatter plots, is here you see a negative correlation, right? So as x increases, the fat gain decreases. So it appears to be that the more people are fidgety, the more non-exercise activity changes they have, the less fat gain that they have. We can also start looking back if we want to regress this back. Here's 200, 300, so this would be 100. So the zero people with no fidgeting, we can sort of see that their uh, 
where their intercept here would be about 3.4 if we look at that graph this way. Okay, so we're already kind of can figure out some of the stats just by looking at the statistical plot. But let's go ahead and have StatCrunch crunch the numbers for us. Okay, so we'll just reduce this for now. And to do the actual test, right, we want to determine the coefficient correlation coefficient R. We want to find that coefficient of determination and then see if there is a statistically uh, relevant correlation between the two. To do that now, we don't go to graphics, we go to the stat tab and we're going to go down to regression. We'll do simple linear and again we're going to put in our variable. So here again the x variable is our independent variable which will be our non-exercise activity the y variable would be the outcome variable, the fat gain. We click next. Again, our null hypothesis here is that our R value should be zero, right? It, we know that R values vary between negative one and one, and theoretically for two variables that are not correlated at all, hypothesis is that the slope or the correlation here would be zero as well as the intercept. There should be no interactivity going on between these variables. So then we'll put zero for that one for our null hypothesis. Then we'll click next. Uh, we can predict a value for y. That's going to be the second part of this problem. We'll come back to that in a bit. For now we'll just click next. And even on the statistical analyses we, we can plot a fitted line here and that will also print out a scatter plot for us. But we'll just click on that for now and then click next and calculate. So now what the software does is it will now give us the R value, it will also calculate the P value for us and give us the intercept and the slope. So this is the slope of the line that we see in the scatter plot. This is the intercept 3.34. Now remember if we go back to the plot there's the intercept if we have this is 200, 300 so it's starting at 100 and 0 would be here which would be out at about 3.3 and it's 3.34 so that goes f right along with what we see in the scatter plot as we said and it's gone ahead and done the statistical analysis for you so it's calculated out a p-value our p-value here is 0 0.02 so again that's lower than 0 0.05 and that's actually is a uh, clue that we've got a significant correlation here right because it's less than 0 0.05 so looking at the statistics here at the top we see that the slope of the line is here for us, our sample size is here, there's our R value, the correlation coefficient at negative 0.7881 so it's close to 1 so it's pretty strong and also it's negative so it correlates with what we see in the scatter plot as a negative correlation. This R squared value means that 62 percent of the variation in the one variable is explained by the other variable so that's our R squared now we have our answers for the correlation coefficient r and the coefficient of determination is our r squared and we can say here that there is a significant relationship between fat gain and non-exercise activity in this case. So of course the next thing we want to look at is can we do a regression now that we have all the calculations here. So what is the predicted fat gain for a person with a non-exercise activity equal to 400 calories? So again we plotted this uh, regression line and we've already found the uh, intercept so that was our 3.34 so again that would be the value where the uh, fat gain for a person was zero non-exercise activity. The slope we've found already and now to go ahead and determine the predicted fat gain for a person with NEA of 400 we can do that with StatCrunch as well so we'll just reduce that for now. We'll go back to our stat tab. We can redo that statistics again. Again under regression, simple linear. Put in the same values. So this time again our x is our independent va variable. So that's our non-exercise activity. Fat gain is going to be our y variable. Again we have the same hypothesis test. So the slope and the intercept should be zero that we're testing and now we're going to click on that little box predicted y value for x, right? So the x value we have is our 400, that's for our non-exercise activity and we'll have the software calculate that for us. Click next and calculate. 
Now it does the same calculation, giving us all the statistics. And now we look down here for the predicted values. We see for a x value of 400, 400 non-exercise activity calories, the predicted y value is 2.02. .02. So this tells us that a person with a non-exercise activity of 400 calories would have a predicted fat gain of only about 2.02. .02. Can we see that in the graph? Yeah, let's go back to the scatter plot that we made because again we found the intercept that way being about 3.3 .3 over here. Now let's look at a person with the x value 400, right? 400 non-exercise activity and look at and it hits that line, that regression line that we drew the linear fit at about 2, 2.02, .02, which ma matches very nicely with what we got from the StatCrunch software. So again, this is a very easy way to get StatCrunch to calculate the R value for you, the R squared value, also to give you the predicted values given an X value, and to make your scatter plot, and also to determine your P value so you can decide whether or not the correlation you see is significant.